Hi, this is Brian Turnbull from the National Free Plate Society showing you how to trim a wing for the Science Olympiad flight event for an already constructed wing that you need to make shorter. So the first step is to take a spare rib, which there's plenty of ribs in the kit, and just fit it without glue into the wing on the right wing um, so that it's three-eighths of an inch from the current wing tip. So there's a three-eighths of an inch gap now. It's very straight. The rib is vertical this way, very carefully measured so that the wing tip will not be cockeyed when you reinstall the wing tip. Uh, once you have the rib fitted dry, then you're going to super glue it, of course, and that will take care of installing the rib. Um, then in order to stick the covering to the rib, I'm going to use, so they'll need to be able to see this, <laughs> um, I'm going to use 3M77 glue sprayed just into a bottle cap, just one quick tenth of a second squirt. And I'm going to thin that with naphtha. Acetone does not work as a thinner for this because acetone will completely break down the um, 3M77. And you want just a few drops to soften the glue and then this is going to be my brush cleaner, the other bottle cap. All right. So if you back up, back the camera mm -hmm. up a little bit. So I'm going to get a little bit of the glue. You don't have to get blobs of the glue, but you can see it's just slightly wet. And getting a little bit of the gl glue mixed with naphtha on the brush. And then I'm going to brush it along the edge of the rib so that it gets, get a little bit wetter. So it gets under the rib and between the rib and the covering. We'll get a little bit more on there. So you can see I'm replenishing the glue every inch or so on the brush. And this is the one step that takes just a little bit of time. Every other step is pretty quick. So I'm going to do it a second time to make sure that I did a good job of getting glue underneath there. So then I'm going to pick up the wing and just kind of press along the rib to make sure the covering is bonded to that rib. So I'm just going to do that for a minute or so. Make sure the covering is stuck to the rib. All right. All right, and then uh, the covering can be detached now with a blade. Can be cut off, basically. All right, and then I'm going to cut the rod and remove the winglet, and I'm going to cut it about in the middle. It doesn't have to be precise at this point. So the winglet is going to be cut off. There we go.
I'm going to one more time make sure the covering is attached nicely to that rib. You can see there's a little bit of sagging. You know, that's not going to be a problem. That's to be expected. It's not going to be as pretty as your original covering job. Okay, then I'm going to reattach the winglet to the wing. And to do that, I need the wing to be held still on the workbench. We'll do that with some pins. And if you don't have pins and a workbench that you can pin into, then you might just do this with um, some weights or something like that. And I'll try to make this a little bit less baggy. I'm kind of pulling the covering a little bit tighter, attaching it to that rib. That's a little better. All right, now the winglet has some, the remainder of the wing still attached to it, so that has to be removed. So I'm going to remove the, try to make this visible, remove the carbon rod, chopping straight down from each end so that the winglet can be attached to my new location. Carbon rod is gone, carbon rod is gone. Then I have a little bit of covering here that is in the way and might be able to just peel that off because we don't really care about that. Peel the old covering off. All right. Then the winglet is just like when your original construction is going to be installed like this. So we're going to test fit it first. And it needs just a tiny touch of sanding to fit. So we will not do it too much, just a little bit. Test fit it again. Still needs a little bit of sanding. Test fit it again. Now it fits. Okay. So to attach the winglet, um, I'm assuming this is probably what you did when you originally installed the winglet. This is thin Duco cement. And we're going to put a bead of thinned Duco cement all along the side of this rib. Assuming it wants to come out of the bottle. We'll mess with it a little bit. And try again. Well, the bottle was flowing a minute ago, and now it doesn't want to, so maybe it'll work on it a little bit more. Clean the bottle just a little bit. And try again. I'm going to try a test over here on a piece of scrap wood. Can you pause? Mm -hmm. Alright, we're back and the glue bottle is flowing now. So you can see, because Duco cement is very, very light glue, mostly evaporates while it's drying. It's different than super glue. You can put a pretty fat bead of it all along this rib. Alright, and then just like the original construction, 
of the winglet attached to the wing, you can slide this into here and then just kind of run your finger back and forth to make sure it's attached. And we'll get the light on it a little bit better. And then we might release these pins. So I can see that the rib is curving just a little bit. So we're going to hold it together for maybe just a minute or two. Maybe stroking back and forth to make sure those two surfaces are c contacting each other well. And then when you're completely finished with the wing, you've got little extra nubs of carbon rod on the leading edge and the trailing edge. And when you're completely done, this is dried a little bit better, you can um, trim those off. So I find that sometimes as the Duco cement dries, it will the, the winglet will lean in. So to counter that, we are going to put a little tab of tape there and lean the winglet out. So that's going to sit there and dry. So I'm going to move on to the next thing, which is cutting the box. So we're seeing a lot of boxes that are slightly oversized. So if you measure your box carefully, and this box was measured carefully, but it is ever so slightly too close to the limit here. It's at 27 centimeters exactly in this one corner. The other corners are 26, 7 ish. So, what I've done is put a little tiny mark, three millimeters. I'm going to trim off that side, and there's no mark on this side. And that's because I'm going to cut a slight angle in the box top. And you see, I have a sheet of three quarter inch plywood just C clamped to the batch. I have my steel ruler and it's going to be on that mark and then even with the box edge here and then I have a very sharp uh, utility knife and I'm not going to try to cut through the cardboard entirely on the first pass. I'm, I'm going to drag it kind of light and then, then the second pass and then a third pass. And the fourth pass, and it is basically off. There's a little bit still catching on there, okay. Alright, it's gone. Alright, so obviously the whole corner is slightly too tall, so I'm going to do the adjoining side. Same basic idea. I'm going to remove three millimeters. light pass, another light pass, another light pass, and there. Now we have a box that's 26.7 on that corner instead of 27 even. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to accurately tape uh, two box sides together. So you have two box sides that you want to join together like this very accurately. The best way to do it is to take your shipping tape, not packing tape. Shipping tape is stronger and stickier. And to apply it to one edge just sitting here, don't try to go to the very ends. That's going to make it plenty strong enough to go within an inch of each end. Get it attached well to one side then turn it vertical, and you can even do this with two people. Have one person hold the two sides together tightly that you are trying to join, top and bottom, and then fold the tape over while the sides are tightly held together. So tightly held together, fold the tape over, and get the tape folded over in a couple spots, and then do that. So there you have a very accurate, tight box joint. All right, hopefully that helps teams that are struggling making their boxes and getting their airplanes to fit in the box without bending. All right, once again, National Free Flight Society, working with Science Olympiad National, 
to provide educational videos. Thank you. Bye.